Oh my God, you gotta read Blood Meridian, bro. What Cormac McCarthy books should you start with? Today in this deep dive, I'm going to be taking multiple pathways for different archetypal readers so that you guys can have a higher chance of getting through all of Cormac McCarthy's bibliography. And if you are a Cormac McCarthy fan, over the, over the past 16 years, I have recommended Cormac McCarthy books over 100 times. And today, hopefully, some of these pathways will help you recommend McCarthy's books with a lot higher success because the worst thing as a book lover is to tell someone, you know, hey, there's this book, Outer Dark, right here. You know, you have to read it. It's like, it's my favorite book of all time. And you give it to someone and they don't read it. So there are different books and different selling points for different types of people. And today we'll be discussing those in relation to McCarthy. So the first person we're going to be talking about today is just the typical archetype reader. They aren't very deep into literary fiction. Maybe they've read a couple challenging books in their life, but you couldn't really call them a deep reader. I would classify a lot of my family, a lot of my work friends like this. And so I have this pitch like, oh my God, there's this guy. He's the greatest living author right now. And you need to read him. But they're reading James Patterson books or airplane thrillers. And I have found the best way to get them into Cormac McCarthy's works, and this may sound a little silly to you guys, is to first of all ask them, have you ever seen No Country for Old Men? Because a lot of people have it, one, the, uh, one best picture. And if they have, you, ha you, you know, then you say, dude, there's this mind blowing book that the movie is based on and it expands so much and it has all this symbolic um, writing and these beautiful nature scenes. It goes so much deeper than that story because you know, No Country for Old Men is a very well-written novel and it is at some level McCarthy's most mainstream novel. We look at his earlier works of Blood Meridian or the Border Trilogy or these recently, or The Road and these recently released works, they aren't as familiar to a normal reader. We have this plot line where a typical guy has, comes across this money and he's being hunted by a villainous character. There is some vagueness in the novel. There are some times where it might be a little bit of a slog to get through. There are, of course, some of the dream scenes, but I feel like they are very well executed. And if someone has not seen the movie, you can say to them, hey, you should really watch this movie. It won an Academy Award for Best Picture. And the movie is a damn fine movie. So they are, so if you, you know, can sell the movie, which is a lot easier than selling a book, then you can follow that up by saying like, pulling the same pitch that I just said, but it will be way easier to get them into it and you'll have a higher retention rate because they just saw the movie. Another thing I should mention, if you really want someone to get into Cormac McCarthy, for instance, when I first showed my wife Cormac McCarthy and she's in the next category, I just read the book with her. If you read a book with someone and go chapter by chapter and discuss it with them, the retention rate skyrockets. But I understand that like we can't, uh, we don't have this unlimited amount of time. So let me know down in the comments below, is this a good first selection for a common archetypal reader? Because there are some other choices. I really feel like The Road is an all right choice. It's an accessible work, but it, it kind of fails as a dystopian novel in relation to other dystopian, famous dystopian novels. Blood Meridian may be just a little bit too hard and weird, and we'll Blood, Blood Meridian, we'll talk about that today, obviously. McCarthy's earlier works are just kind of very bizarre, especially if someone has never really read into classic literature, if they've never read Hemingway and Faulkner and just love classic literature in general, those works are going to be a tad inaccessible. And of course there are exceptions to this rule, but once, you know, once again, and I'm sure some of you guys can attest to this, you give these books to people and you never, they never read them and you never hear about it again, even if, and you know that they've tried to read it. So the next group we are going to be talking about, so at the end, um, in another video, I'll be actually walk, talking about all these different archetypes and giving the full reading order from first to last book that everyone should read. But today we're just talking about the first book. So the next um, group is people who are in that middle zone. They aren't just some literary fiction fanatics or they just aren't the common reader. They re they have read some classics. They enjoy literary fiction. They are, or they are just consider, you can consider them just a smart individual. And this is actually the hardest choice because for a long time I was like, oh my God, you gotta read Blood Meridian, bro. And I was telling all these people and like, unsurprisingly, the retention rate was kind of low because we have a Western that's written with a third person omnip omnipotent narrator and it's very violent and kind of a bizarre book. People in the next category that we'll talk about 99% of the time love Blood Meridian. But this crowd, I feel like there is a one better selection to start with. And that is one of my favorite McCarthy novels, The Crossing. And The Crossing is so good because we get a little bit of everything from McCarthy. We get some of his best nature writing in any book. And there are no spoilers here, everybody. So Feel free, not be scared about that. There is tragedy and loss and friendship and heartbreak throughout the novel. There are great symbolic in the dream scenes and the italics that McCarthy does. There are connections with, you know, Mexico and the United States that a lot of people are kind of familiar with and want to explore. And I've 
found that when I have given this novel to my friends and to my students and just given some small precursors, especially about the Spanish. So, you know, obviously there are in, you know, The Crossing, there are a ton of dialogue passages that are in Spanish, but there is a great um, website online that just tells you all the translations. You can just use your phone as you're reading the book. So that's a pretty easy obstacle to jump over. If you, once again, you need to give someone that tip. You need to say to them, you need to look up The Crossing Spanish translation online and just have it on your phone bookmarked or on your computer or whatever and just follow that down and it won't be very hard you know all the pretty horses is another selection but i just don't feel like it's strong especially for a new reader doesn't i don't feel like it's as diverse obviously no country for old men is another great choice the passenger which was just released is is honestly a decent choice too too and you know the earlier southern works it just takes a certain type of person and i wouldn't risk it unless they're really in this next category because like i have tried to give people those southern work southern works and it's a little bit harder and the only exception to to this rule is now that we're in the middle zone if there's someone who's kind of in this middle zone and they are committed to finishing they may not be this high literary bro or whatever like a lot of us are we're what we're on we're talking about cormac mccarthy on youtube but they are committed to finishing books that you give them you know i have friends that if i you know they trust me enough that i said yo you need to read this casual isha guru novel they are going to read it even if they maybe don't like it because they trust me and there's a purpose and we'll have a great conversation about it so with that in mind you and if someone's in this middle zone you have a lot more freedom if they commit to finishing it so the next the final category is of course the literary bro category that friend that you know person in your life who is smart that talented student and you know obviously you can choose any book we're at the point now where you can basically give them any book don't give them the road probably don't give them the orchard keeper outer dark there are a lot of better choices than that you know, we could talk about Sutri as a good selection, but that one may be a little bit iffy. Once again, if they're into the Falkyrian and the Hemingwayan um, mindset and they are just a really good reader, then they'll finish it. They'll enjoy it. They'll be able to get into it pretty fast. But if they aren't, I would say, you know, reel, reel that back a little bit and obviously give them Blood Meridian. Like, please just give them the book. We all know about Blood Meridian. We've all had our life chains and our minds blown and yada, yada, yada by, by Blood Meridian. And I don't think there's a better choice. You know, I would actually argue once again, because I'm such a mark for the Crossing series. I am an, I love environmental literature and I live, I've lived in the Southwest my entire life. So like, I'm really into all that. And a lot of my friends grew up in the Southwest too. Here we are. So, you know, that's a big, I can kind of sell that a little bit more, but Blood Meridian is a book that blows people's minds. You know, I, I've been in multiple graduate courses at university where Blood Meridian was on, on the catalog and everyone in the class was shocked from, you know, every single political aisle, every single age, gender, race, um, you know, introverts, extroverts, you know, I very rarely people did not like it. I can maybe think of one or two people and they really, I really didn't count them. You know, there's always those people, but you know, it had a huge success rate with people who were really into reading and people were shocked. We I mean, you know if you look at Harold Bloom and you know, if you just look at the list of people who are into Blood Meridian, you know, Harold Bloom, Stephen King, uh, David Foster Wallace. I think if you go, I think it's RadicalReads.com and you uh, find Blood Meridian. There are so many celebrities and people who recommend it. It's got a huge list, a huge following, and it's unlike anything anyone has ever read. So it's going to have this huge retention rate and success rate. So very soon, though, I'm going to actually be building out all of these archetypes, you know, with images and exploring the whole reading order for these three people. One, one through 12 of McCarthy's novels when Stella Maris comes out so that we can help, you know, the Cormac McCarthy community grow. And then I hope, you know, with all my work on Cormac McCarthy on this channel, I'm just going to continue dialoguing with you guys. Like, please tell me where I'm wrong here. Give me your recommendations. And hopefully we can just do honestly statistics, figure out where is the best place to start. Because I feel like these three categories are pretty good. Let me know if we should use different categories. I'm just getting this party started. But if you think we need to expand it or minimize it, or if everyone's just the same, we can. But this is just a very um, early attempt to start mapping out how to spread, you know, literacy, how to improve Cormac McCarthy literacy rates across the country. So whenever these videos come out, they will be over here. But until then, have fun, have a great day and happy reading. Peace.